Not only do I turn licks, I turn bottoms into tops. I might be a bear, but deep down I'm just a kitten. Hello! I'm Hunter Harden. And I'm Papa the Bear. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Real House Bears of Salt Lake City. Poor cast, I say. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my... <laughs> That is one of my favorites of your accents. <laughs> Sometimes we'll be in the car and he'll try to be like British Cockney GPS. You gotta take a left over here on the on the stop sign. <laughs> That's what I and then you gotta take a right over there out to the scale. <laughs> That's what I you gotta take a left and take a U once you hit the U-turn, <laughs> but that's only after you hit the pond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that's what you brought today. I'm, now I'm even more excited than I was. That's a great start. I love that guy. I wish I, I, I wish I could have done like something like more. I don't know. Hip hoppy. Hip hoppy. Since and this one is this one's called hip hop and heartbreak. Did you ever, you've ever seen the Madonna music video? Who's that guy um, that Sasha Baron Cohen used to play? The British uh, like rap artist. You know who I'm talking about? Oh yes. Uh, I it was like Ollie G or yes, something like yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. That's who you are. <laughs> <laughs> hip hop and heartbreak with, oh. with Hunter H. Oh my gosh, what would be my hip hop name? That would be that's that's something I really got to focus on. It's a hip hop name. I have to get, like Little Honey. <laughs> Little Honey. <laughs> If you have any suggestions for Hunter's uh, rap name, rap name, find him on Instagram. Listen, or... I grew up on the mean streets of Reno. <laughs> yeah, and Reno, you Nevada. Are... Mean. Oh, I am. I'm rough. <laughs> I am rough. You are rough. Rough and tough. So we kind of had a little bit of a rough Friday night. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> Some, I mean, it was fun. Parts of it were great. Parts of it were it terrifying. Was an, it was another first for us. We had a bunch of firsts we that have, day. We've had a lot of firsts in general in our relationship, but. Uh, one, uh, some not so good first this past Friday. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start it off with something awesome. Uh, yeah. we, we got bored on Friday and we're like, hey, let's go up to Park City. Let's go check out Meredith Mark's store. And yeah, we're like, let's Papa do this. Got cabin fever, get me out of here. <laughs> and so we walk around up there a little bit. I got an awesome Park City hat. I've been, look, every time I go up to Park City, I'm looking for a new hat and I could not find one that spoke to me. And I saw one in the window and it's like, Hunter, come in. I mean, like, me. you did not hesitate. You went, that's the hat. That, that was the hat. Like, that was the hat that I needed. And no lie, we visited Park City no less than five or six times in, uh, since we've moved here. And he's always, like, looking for, like, the right ball cap. And he, I'm not kidding you, there was no hesitation. If I was rich, I would have bought all of them so nobody can have it. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, we um, go and get a little bit of a tea, and we warm ourselves yeah, up, nice and then tea. we venture on up the icy streets of Park City. Yes, to yes. To go and, make our way up to you know, Meredith Marks. And Marks. thoughtfully, we checked to make sure the store hours so that it would be open. I mean, we got, we got there. there at 5. It was later in the day, but it said it was open till 6. I thought it was 6.30 even. No, uh, no, it said 6 on the maps. Oh, gotcha. So uh, we jaunt her on, you know, we're like... Looking cool. We look awesome. We're dressed up real nice. Yeah, we did look pretty cute. I looked really cute. You looked you looked cute. <gasps> That's like offensive. You no, know, I'm just joking. You look super, super <laughs> know, cute. Um, and then we make it to Meredith Mark's shop. Dun dun. And it's closed. Yeah, no lie. There was someone actually in there on on her phone, to be honest with you. It didn't look like she was being very productive. I think she was probably like looking at schedules and stuff, because I did see a laptop. Yeah, and I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there was some sort of, like, inventory or some sort of, like, business. Business lunch special, like, <laughs> yes. women's lunch special, stuff like that. <laughs> some business women's work being done in that store. <laughs> <laughs> but um, check out uh, um, all of our social media. We uh, did, when I ha we had took some, took some pictures of the storefront and of that cute little pink uh, block sign that's hanging out front and um, <laughs> some of the things in the store window. So, yeah, check out. It was really cute to, because, I mean, we'd walked by a hundred times, but it's a women's boutique, so it's we never right, have to go in. Yeah, it's right across the street from where we end our Park City trips every time, so I can yes. get a caramel apple. Yes, yeah, so we <laughs> always stop at Rocky Mountain Candy Shop Rocky Mountain or Rocky Candy Mountain Sweet Shop, because um, they do have these big, giant, great 
caramel apples or different types of apples. Like you like oh, a that, strawberry cheesecake. Yeah, apple the strawberry right? cheesecake apple, caramel apple. Oh my gosh, it is so good. Oh, I eat it every and single time. I go who knew it's been right across the street the whole entire time? I know. We look at it every single time we sit <laughs> <Yes>. there. <laughs> um, so um, you know, again, Park City is practically the greater Salt Lake City area. So it only takes us about half hour, 45 minutes max to get home because we live a, bit, live a little bit south of the city. And then uh, we live on the fourth floor of our condo. Yep. So we make it home and we, we got some food. Yeah, we, we did. did. The, we did the Lisa Barlow thing. We got some fast food Yes, we did because it's next to the liquor store where I had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> had to fill, fill up my whiskey. And then somewhere in between, we live on the fourth floor, somewhere in between the third and the fourth floor, the elevator completely stops. Completely stops. And it says three, but I know that we're really close to four. So in my head, immediately it's going to drop and we're not going to make it. Yeah. So, I mean, I at first I was like, oh, this is comical. But then I was like, oh, no, we're stuck on an elevator. I'm feeling really uncomfortable. I instantly started pressing all the 911 buttons on there, like, <laughs> yes. immediately. Because I, that was like, that's like a huge fear. Uh, if we're on the second floor, I wouldn't have mind very much. Because if you fell, it's, it's not that bad. But we're, like, close to the fourth story and falling in an elevator. That is terrifying. Yeah, it was. Um... I immediately called the property manager. Um, luckily, we were set. If we were stuck there for the night, luckily we had bottles of liquor, we had a bag of Carl's Jr., and we were ready. You know, all we had to do was pee in the corner, we'd be ready. We just had to make a designated pee area, and we were totally good. <laughs> but we were terrified. Like, of course, we immediately got on our phones and posted on our Facebook, we're stuck in an elevator. I know, I, I did a live video. Um, on Instagram of us stuck in there, and that really helped me calm down because I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> and of course, everyone's like, so you want to be getting busy in the elevator? And I'm like, I am not moving. I know, we stayed in the exact same spots when it Like, stopped. seriously, Hunter <laughs> sat down on the floor. I didn't even go that far. I just could not move. I'm a big guy. I'm terrified. I, I was afraid that every step I would take, like the elevator would start swaying or something. You know? <laughs> so, uh, no, we did not get busy. And there was no love in the elevator because we were terrified. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to make love in an elevator that's stuck on the yeah, fourth floor. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Luckily, we were only in there for, what, 20 minutes? Maybe I'm going to say three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, luckily, they didn't make us wait too terribly long. They were able to get us out. Um, it, all of a sudden, well, sometime we were in there, every now and then the elevator would try to move <sighs> and then stop again. And we are like, ah! It was it was awful. So that was our terrifying story. So maybe if the store was open, that would have none happened. of this would have happened. So <laughs> thank you, Meredith. I still love you, Meredith, but you gave us one of the scariest nights of our life by just not having your store open. Exactly. We would have spent time in there. We would have been like trying on Brooks's clothes. And yeah. I would have been trying on jewelry. <laughs> I was looking forward to at least getting pictures of a sweatsuit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of Brooks. He really <laughs> redeemed himself a little bit this week. I was going to say that. Brooks, this was the most funniest, like, charming that Brooks has been this entire season. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I mean, he was still a little bratty from time to time, but... Overall, it was likable. It was yeah, likable. Like he had a thousand sound bites this week. Oh my gosh, you guys, we got like a ton of sound bites. Yeah. And it's so funny because at the beginning of the season, you know, not even the beginning of the season, this whole season, I haven't been a big fan of Brooks, but he makes the best sound bites. He really does. This week he was really on fire. This week, <laughs> it was a little bit more reminiscent of episode one, Brooks. Can you guys do this in your bedroom or something? Like I'm standing here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, let's go ahead and get let's go ahead and get into this episode oh since my we're gosh. talking about this it. This is the last episode where we're in single digits. Next episode is ten after Can this. Can you believe we've done nine episodes of this? This is insane. Yeah, it's really where's my by... Emmy? <laughs> where's your Emmy? We have to get on television for that. So oh. we're gonna have to start recording our episodes like people keep asking us. To well, do. there is one episode on our YouTube of us trying out Vita Tequila. Where's my Oscar? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure it got lost in the mail. <laughs> so back to hip hop and heartbreak. Um, did you notice that they show the temple not only in every episode, but like in every intro and every commercial break, they show the temple like it's beautiful I and mean, it's worth showing, but I'm like, they really like to harp 
not harp on, but they really like to focus on the religious aspect of this show. Well, if if you play the drinking game during these things, if Mormon oh. is your word, Mormon is going to get you trashed. Or every what about episode. if every time they show a temple? Or even just a temple, yeah. yeah that's my exactly. new drinking role. Oh, great. <laughs> You're going to be so trashed. <laughs> You're going to be like Whitney at the end of this episode. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yes. <laughs> so we start off um, in Meredith's house with Brooks and Chloe and Teddy the dog. And it's fr- uh, the upcoming Friday is Valentine's Day. I mean, they filmed this season just in time before the pandemic COVID, happened. Yeah, before everything started going to crap. Uh, but I did love how they were fast tracking like through the city, through SLC all the way up to Park City. I just love our city. It's yeah, beautiful. It really, really is. Brooks doesn't understand that some people actually do need to go to therapy to learn how to not, like, to default to an attack or a defense when you kind of, like, <laughs> learn that behavior in a relationship for a long time. He's like, you had to have a therapist tell you that? I'm like, actually, yeah. Yeah, everyone needs a little yeah, bit of therapy. <laughs> sometimes you get into these places where that's how you've learned to react to things, and you have to have someone help you retrain yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. But um, it was it was a cute little moment, and then we go Heather and Whitney on the horses. Uh, Whitney's so dirty. <laughs> See, all the time she's, like, in an episode, she's all always talking about sex and I just love it so much because she's like so Heather you're good at riding horseback (laughs) what else have you been riding (laughs) and and Heather was to ride Joe oh my (laughs) Joe was hot he Uh, was hot listen I love how Heather gay flirts like she is no holds barred she's like I've already made another appointment with Joe I I (laughs) that's my girl that's the way I do it she is such a flirt I love it but yeah Joe the horseback Writer, um. you know, but between Whitney and Heather, Justin and whoever Heather Gay hooks up with, those are some lucky men right there. I I really hope that through this like show, Heather finds an awesome man that's going to treat her the way that she is going to see her. And love her. Acknowledge her and love her for who she is. That's awesome. And then (laughs) switching over, this little moment with Lisa Barlow and Jack is so funny. Do you want a boiled hot dog? Oh, microwaved hot dog. Oh, did she buy? Yeah, she's like, do you want me to make breakfast? And he's like, no, I don't need a microwaved hot dog. Thank you very much. (laughs) Okay, so um, last week we told you all that we had some big... Lisa Barlow related news about her messaging people after 11 o'clock. We still have this news to tell you, but the problem is it's not happening until tomorrow. Yeah, she had to put it on hold because, well, she was gone. Yeah, and she was do out you, of town. What, what, where, why was she out of town? Filming the reunion. Ooh, and we saw a little clip from Andy Cohen about how long the reunion was filming, and he said it's really good. Like, every reunion is so good. Yeah. Oh, the reunion is the best part of the season as far as I'm concerned. And it looks like this reunion is lasting all day long and it's going to give us some good... What if their very first season they get a three-episode reunion? That would be pretty amazing. That's never happened. I, I Not that I can think of off the top of my head, for sure. Two episodes, for sure. But three, that doesn't have... A, a premiere season, I don't know. And you know what else doesn't happen? In this episode... Have you, or not even in this episode, but in this season, have you noticed how many times they are filming Jen Shaw getting her makeup done? But all the other girls, they already have all their makeup done. There's not any episodes where the girls are getting their makeup done and they're being filmed. You know what I I'm saying? I did not notice that. Yeah, I notice this a lot. Well, Whitney has a timer too, but I, that was maybe the fashion show what I'm thinking about. I think it's the fashion show, yeah. but yeah, like just getting ready at home. How many episodes have we had of Jen Shaw getting her makeup done True. by her 12 assistants? True. But anyway, really quickly, back to the Lisa Barlow surprise. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Yes. So <laughs> it's not happening until tomorrow. And so we don't want to really say anything. And no, we're not meeting Lisa. Lisa Barlow, that would be a dream. But something really great has that we're excited about is happening tomorrow, and we just don't want to say it until it happens. So check out our social media this week. We'll definitely be posting pictures of it, and then um, we'll talk about it next uh, next week's episode. I love that. So if you're like, oh, thanks, you, I was looking forward to that. We, we really do have a good reason. You're so. a liar, <laughs> Mr. Grinch. <laughs> So anyway, back um, to Jen Shaw getting ready in bed. Ready, she's in bed, and her assistant there. Do her assistants live with her? Because remember that other episode where her assistant brought her pills on a platter with some food and breakfast, and she was getting her makeup ready in the morning. Yeah, it was early in the morning, and look, Jen Shaw is still in bed right now. 
Well, I mean, who knows what time they start in the day. I mean, I don't know. The place looks big enough that someone could be staying in a spare room somewhere. I don't know. I, it wouldn't be a surprise. That is just shaw amazing. That is. It's shabulous. Shablam.com. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> so uh, Jen and her assistant are talking about preparing Sharif's surprise party at Top Golf. Um, a hip hop and golf theme. Like, what? What does that mean? <laughs> if I, someone said, "Hey, I want you to come to my hip hop and golf party," how would you translate that? Argyle. Yeah. Oh, but maybe in like a hip hop <laughs> like, like a hip hop Argyle, oh. like uh, like like golfing yeah. outfit. You win. You win. And I would have one glove on. You win. One white glove and uh, an Argyle like vest. You are so. And like right. some chains around my neck. Yes. I'm yes. not gonna try to compete with stew chains. It's stew chains. <laughs> But I'm gonna I'm gonna wear some chains. I you, you're right. Is that good? You and so and right. um, what is that cap called? Like uh, just I know what you're talking about. Like yeah, a, like a driver's cap. Like a of, driver's but... cap too. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah, I got this. I mean, I think she should have said it's a hip hop themed party at Top Golf. Yes, <laughs> that might have made a little bit more sense. But, but a hip hop and golf party, I was like, those one of these things is not like the other. You know, I was like, what is happening? There's here? a lot of things that are confusing about that. Even like Jen Shaw's outfit for the party too. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. we'll get into that Lots when it to comes talk about that. when it comes through. But I want to go to a hip hop party so bad now. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. I want to. Totally... You know, I got my I... '90s dance moves ready to go. Okay, you got the Fresh Prince of Bel Air '90s moves down, and I had no idea until like the fifth year of me being with you, and I make him dance like this. We're gonna have to post it online. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, <laughs> we will. All right, be looking also to social media of me doing 90s dance moves. <laughs> uh, so Whitney and Jen get on the phone together, and we find out that Jen has not invited Mary. And I have to say, as soon as I found out about that, that made me sad. Yeah, it's, it's really not like the Real Housewives not to invite somebody that's not supposed to be there. Yeah, you know, I mean... It's, it's to cause conflict. And so I kind of found it weird that she wasn't invited to this party. You're taking away their screen time. You're taking away their money, as far as I understand. I do believe they do... Um, get paid per episode and if she's not invited to this party then she's not really much in the episode so i i, I feel bad for mary i do i do feel bad for mary but she apologizes to your face but then on her like confessional she's not sorry about it at all well true so true. like i could just i don't know but that's but that's she definitely feels bad for being left out and as Someone who grew up not the coolest kid in school. I, I have FOMO as well. And listen, Jen Shaw says, hey, we could be friends. We'd be cordial. I'll fix your wig if it's falling off. <gasps> that well, honey, line, I was like, that is some a, good shade right there. You need to be fixing it like 24-7. No, well, Mary's been doing good. She like, has been doing better. This episode, I, I haven't written a note about her wig since the, um, fa what's the, the, Fashion event, the, the fashion Metropolitan Park City, the Met Gala event. The oh, the Met, Met Gala, Gala cocktail event. hour surprise. Yes, yes. <laughs> I haven't had anything to say about her wig since then. She's been looking She's been doing a good. lot more smooth. I do, I do feel bad for her, and especially when she calls her husband. And you know, and right. And did you notice that right away when Mary gets on the phone, she gets tongue tied and can hardly talk, and <sighs> she's just so awkward when the camera's on her, even talking to. Her husband. I have a lot of different opinions about that. Again, I've said pretty much every week that she's, she nor her son are comfortable in front of the camera. Mm -mm. Number two, Mary is not very good with her words. No. And number three, is Mary not very good with her words because she's not being genuine? That's, I, I don't, I just don't, I can't, I don't know. All I know is that Mary has become very unlikable. <laughs> um, you know, I... I'm still, I still do like Mary. I, I know that there's a lot of things to not like about her uh, and what she might be doing with her congregation and her congregation's money, and I agree with all of that, but I'm just watching a television show and I want to be entertained, yeah. and I am entertained by Mary. You know, I, I've been hard on her for sure, and I'm not, again, I'm not gonna let her get away with stuff, no. but she is entertaining television. It's just the fact that she's a pastor. That's just what, honestly, that's the one thing that really strikes a chord with me. I get it. Oh, listen, but, I have the same... I, I, I still hold resentment for my childhood pastor because yeah. I felt like he lived quite a, a, a you know, uh, quite a life And see, my, past, my pastor <laughs> growing up would walk two miles to church because he didn't own a car. Because he... And he, every day we'd pass 
him by church and he'd be reading the Bible while he's walking. And you never picked him up. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my mom was driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that, that made me feel horrible. <laughs> oh, there goes our pastor walking again. You want to pick him up? No. 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 <laughs> You're so mean. Well, now I feel bad. I'm going to have to call Pastor Island and be like, I'm so sorry we didn't pick you up. <laughs> oh my God. That is funny. So, But what I did find out, because I was wondering, where is Mary getting all of her money? And so we find out that her grandma not only left her five homes, but she also left her a mortgage company and restaurants and blah, 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 blah. So she left her like an empire. Well, again, who? there's really no evidence that her grandmother actually did leave her these things. <laughs> um, you know, again, check our social media outlets, check Reddit, check pretty much anything that's reporting on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and you'll see the video of her cousin dishing the tea. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff coming out about her, but it's just so irritating to hear her talk about her five homes. Not only does she have five homes, but she makes sure nobody lives in them <laughs> at all. <laughs> she, uh, we don't share. We don't share. So I guess I remember that in the Bible, though. I do remember that part in the Bible where they where, said to share. No, where <laughs> Jesus had like five different homes, and yeah. like he went over to the homeless and said, "Ha ha ha." You can't I'm going say, to stay my summer home. Don't touch this. Right? That's very. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Yes. Um, but I got the big house in Salt Lake City. The home in Vegas, New York. She says New York, of course. Of course. Um, Orlando. Okay, I, I know that her mom, her grandmother had that home. Okay. Because remember, she wanted her to take her to the Dillards in Orlando, which we'll talk about in a second. Orlando. And then Carmel, Indiana. I was like, what's in Indiana? Out, out of all of the out of all of these cities, you have a home. Why do you have one in Carmel or Carmel? Maybe it's pronounced Indiana. That's Carmel. <laughs> Carmel, Indiana. You never know. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I, did you catch that part where Mary's like talking to Robert Sr. and she's like, I've been fending for myself every morning. And yes. her maid looks up and she's just like, eh, I made you breakfast. All right. I've been cleaning up. I was like, oh, Charlinda's not the cook too. Poor Charlinda. <laughs> Poor Charlinda. I mean, she already got fussed at for not sweeping all the way to the edges. Oh, she was not cleaning all the way to the edges. Uh. She's got to do that right now. It just, ugh. Oh, so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> so Whitney gets there and um, puts on her booties mm -hmm. and uh, tells Mary that, uh, well, Mary tells Whitney that she's not invited and she doesn't understand why. Oh, no, tells her husband this. And yes, he says, yes. jealousy is such a cruel mistress. I, I wrote that. I, I said that her husband, the, the like the... It right away encourages the whole jealousy storyline of which it, you know which I hate. it's not. I you hate know, that. Jen. The only thing Jen Shaw would be jealous of is another housewife spending more time with her own husband because she doesn't get to do that with Sharif. Right. She doesn't get to spend time with her husband, so I think that's the only thing she would be jealous of in someone else's but relationship. She's not jealous of Mary and her. No. Husband, not at all. No. But when Mary starts to cry, I really felt it again. I mean, how exciting would it be to be like, oh my gosh, I am a real housewife. I'm a Bravo, Real Housewife, but clearly no, none of my cast members are including me. None of my cast members think I'm good enough. None of my cast members think I'm cool enough to hang out with them. And again, you're taking the money out at my hands. It's so crazy to see a housewife get ostracized so quickly, right away. Yeah, on a season one. I mean, season we've one. seen <laughs> we've seen housewives get ostracized. Yeah, but, but on season one, like right away, and it wasn't yeah. even past like the third episode she got ostracized. Yeah. But this re uh, this phone call between uh, her and Robert Sr. is really sweet. It seems nice. Again, it's hard to know what's genuine and what's not with her. But this was a very, he seems like a super nice guy. And there were rumors that they were hooking up even before her grandmother died. So maybe mm -hmm. they really do. Maybe she really does have an affection for him. She's Because, you know. Again, I don't know if she really was so nervous about marrying him. I'm not really so sure how much of the truth she's telling here. Yeah, there you can't really you got to take everything she says with a grain of salt because you don't know what's true or how far of it is the truth, and you not, don't know the backline story. And the more backline story about her is from her family members, and they are just trashing her. Yeah, yeah, they are just 
piling on. It is crazy. It's it's hard to watch and listen to sometimes. Because again, I really want to like my housewives. That's why I watch it. I want to be entertained. I want to laugh. I want to look at people act ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> What is also what is ridiculous is how beautiful Heather Gay's cat Stormy is. I was gonna say I freaking love this episode because there are cats everywhere. <laughs> yes, Heather or Hunter is a major major cat guy. I love kitties. You really do, and that Stormy the cat is one of the prettiest cats I've seen. That uh, cat so is so pretty. Um, with at Heather Gay's house with her her pretty daughters, they're all together for Galentine's Day. Galentine's Day. Day. That is for your gal pals. And then we finally get to meet the ex-husband, Billy. Billy. Um, knowing the kind of guys that Heather Gay is into, not what I expected. Yeah, very creeper vibe. I got <laughs> very creeper fest. But, you know, I don't know who he is. But when you see pictures of him from the past, it looks like he had a fuller face. It looks like he's so gaunt. Well, you know, she kind of explains it to us. There, he's like, She's like, well, he checked all the boxes. He's over six feet. Amen, sister. That is my number one thing. You have to be taller than me, at least six <laughs> feet or higher. You're lucky, Bear. I know. <laughs> he was cool back in the day, uh, rich. and Not even rich, like royalty rich. Yeah, well, <laughs> Well, he had that family connection to Howard Hughes, which made him Mormon royalty. They got engaged three months after they met, but I, it's I'm not surprised by that. I find that a lot of people who are part of um, religious organizations or what have you that don't allow you to have sex before marriage, I feel like they really kind of rush that through sometimes. But right away, like in this little episode, I don't like them right away. Because he blamed the crumbs on the cat. How did you know that? <laughs> did you read my notes? No, I did not. I did not. I just, I even wrote down, he blames the crumbs on the floor on the cat. And I thought about that. I was like, oh, the Ooh. second I saw that, I was like, I don't like him. Yep. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and so what, when I decided I didn't like him is when she says they went to go see Scary Movie. There, One of the scary movies. There was the whole glory it, hole scene, which I knew exactly what scene she was talking it, about. Okay, it was from Scary Movie 2. It's when Sean Wayans' character goes to the bathroom because he's at the movies with Jenna Pekin Smith getting ready to watch Stab, which is a like a foe of the screen, screen movies. movies. Yeah, and he's going to the bathroom and he hears somebody going something like that <laughs> through the wall, and then a wiener comes out and when he's listening to it and pokes him in the ear through the glory hole. <laughs> I love that scary movie so much. <laughs> so, Heather uh, Gay clearly thought it was funny and not nearly as offensive. I mean, that's the first five minutes of the movie, I think. So it's like right away in the movie. And her husband is like, nope, we're getting up and leaving. <laughs> and since she didn't find it as offensive as he did, he withheld sex from her. That's when I was like, okay, I don't, I don't have much good to say about Billy. That is crazy. <laughs> it's, he, he's very, very controlling, and the more you hear about him, the more controlling he is. Like when you find out why they divorced, is crazy. Go ahead, and I have something to say about that. But uh, you go ahead. So basically. Their daughter were going was going to get baptized, and the timing conflicted with his sister coming to it. And so Heather was like, no, I don't want to change the time of it, because probably everyone else has already like agreed to that time and made time out of their schedules for it. So she said, no, I'm going to have the baptism whether your sister's going to be there or not. And he just says, well, fine. You could keep it wherever, however you want, but I'm moving out. Yeah, so the things that I have to say about that are, number one, I'm certain that it wasn't, that was just kind of like the final straw, you know? It, mm -hmm. A lot of people on social media are like, I can't believe he left just because of that, which I'm sure what it was was just her being slightly defiant, and that's what he couldn't take, and that's crappy. Mm -hmm. That's awful. But certainly, it just wasn't that one event where he's like, okay, I'm leaving. Well, you don't hear that they fought all the time, really. Like, well, at least she doesn't say that. Well, she said that they found out right away that they weren't compatible. Well, yeah, it was four months after they met that 
he proposed to her and they got married and then lived together. Yeah. I mean, again, please don't translate that as me defending anything he said or did. I'm just saying a lot of people on social media, I've been reacting as if it was just that one thing. And then all of a sudden their marriage was over. And I was like, certainly it was a little bit deeper than that, friends. But that is a (laughs) stupid reason to break up your family. Oh, yeah. That's a stupid reason. 100%. I wonder how his sister feels (laughs) hearing that. Right. You know, so because I wasn't there, you guys broke up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, um, moving on to from that. Well, actually not, because I thought it was really cute when she they ask about getting their ears double pierced, and he's like, as long as they don't have a tattoo. One of them already does. <laughs> but it says dad. I love I the cute. irony of that. It's complete different, you know, well, mom. <laughs> yeah, she was just giving him a hard time. I love it. Really I thought cute. that was sweet. So now, finally, Whitney gets over to Mary's house and puts on her booties. I got my timeline mixed up a little bit. Um, I But what was another moment favorite Mary moment is when she's getting the snacks out of the container and she's like, "Mm, one more. Yeah. (laughs) I I relate. I relate to you for that, Mary. (laughs) I really love Mary's red top. I pretty much like the boots, even though they look a bit too big. I don't like those red pants also with it. No, it's too much. Yeah. A little bit too much. But as soon as Whitney walked in, I was like, oh my God, they're Christmas. And then Whitney said, hey, we're Christmas. We're Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. They were very, very much Christmas. But Mary, again, she just doesn't know how to say her words and like function right in society because she's like, I need you to put booties on because... Well, there's dirt out there, and I don't know if you hurled and then walked in it and then came in, or if a bird blessed your shoes. I'm like, wh- why don't you just say, I just don't want my my carpets to get dirty from shoes. Yeah, That's all you have to say. I would say a large population of... I've been to houses where you have to take your shoes yeah, off the front that's of the door. nothing come... I had a friend who, he had a basket of clean socks by his door. So when you came in, you could take off your shoes and put on his socks and walk around his house. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know if they were worn before, but back then you didn't worry so much about germs. I don't know who they were. <laughs> He's like, here's the community sock, wear it. <laughs> Um, so Mary and Whitney go into Mary's closet, and did you see the look on Whitney's face? When they opened the door and yes, saw that? it's like when they opened the door to Willy Wonka's. I mean, her jaw <laughs> fell onto the floor. <laughs> uh, I told you, there was a room filled with clothes, just piles yes. of clothes, and it's it's true. It just makes me so happy that well, I was right. Well, if your clothes are taking over your 20,000 square foot house, you might be a high-end hoarder. Thank you for that great line, Whitney. Oh, yeah, that was so good. But that's not the only room she has clothes in. Yeah, she has. She said she has them in all of her closets, so that's why Whitney's like, taking over your whole home. 20,000 square foot, that's a pretty big home, right? I'm sure all of their <laughs> other houses are exactly the same, filled with clothes. Yeah, and she, Mary said her mother had the same passion for fashion, and that's where she she brings up Dillard's. And I'm like, I shop at Dillard's all the time. I love Dillard's. Am I fancy? Well, we shop in the clearance section. Well, true. But I, you can say that about any store I go into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whitney tells Mary that she has mad style. Why does everyone keep saying this? Mad is like a total, like, uh, youth West Coast type of But thing. no, why is everyone saying Mary has good style? Oh, <laughs> Well, I was hoping that Mary, that Whitney was meaning mad by and like you're insane, like that's a mad <laughs> choice. No, Lisa, th- uh, Lisa thinks that Mary has the best fashion. Whitney thinks it doesn't. I'm like, she might have some of the best pieces. Yeah, she has great garments, but that doesn't mean that she's wearing them well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, why does everyone keep saying that? Quit it. No, I'm just kidding. Quit encouraging her. Ugh. Where's your beret? You know, <laughs> <laughs> just put a beret on it. And then Whitney asked Mary how she's doing, and Mary goes straight to Jen Shaw. Yeah. You know, she feels like it's not fair that she's not invited. She uh, she blames all of the other ladies on not standing up for her as kind of her reason for not being invited. Mm-hmm. She doesn't understand that at that cocktail thing, they were trying to get her to understand what Jen was saying. They weren't attacking Mary, but they were telling Mary, listen, the way you're going about this isn't right. And she had... She didn't want to hear it, like, at all. So this is where Mary is. She's just ostracized from the group. And this is where Whitney gives me something I've longed for in all of my years of Housewives. She actually apologized unapologetically. How boring. No, for once. (laughs) You know, I said just a few weeks ago, I was like, what's the harm in saying, hey, I'm sorry that my actions, or in this case, lack of actions, I'm sorry that what I did hurt your feelings. How can I make it up to you? You know, 
I think most of these women are so afraid to apologize because that means they're claiming accountability or claiming that they did something nasty when mm -hmm. it really can just be something as simple as, you know what, I didn't realize that what I was doing, but I'm sorry that it hurt you. I'm sorry we let you down. You know, I make bad saying. decisions all the time and I'm willing to apologize. So thank you, Whitney, for finally giving me that moment. <laughs> she, uh, she makes up for it with a, a real good regular housewife thing later on in the episode. Oh, Lord, Lord, she Lord. really gave us a good housewife at the end of this episode. You know, these ladies in general just really don't like drama. Like Whitney, or not Whitney, uh, Meredith and Lisa in particular. Heather, Heather, Heather kind of doesn't mind to get into the drama, but she knows when to step out of it. I love her. She's so <laughs> sneaky. She's no. just like, uh-oh, abort. <laughs> uh, so it's really funny. Maybe if you don't love drama, Housewives <laughs> isn't for you. But I sure am glad that I do have uh, Lisa and Meredith in my life, so none about that. At Meredith's house, they're ordering sushi. And Seth is like, why are we limited to order sushi? And I'm team Seth here. Well, and I said, now we're at Meredith's house with Brooks and Seth and Meredith, and they are discussing the long time question every couple has to deal with. Well, what do you want to eat? Amen to that. So he, It is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. He wants pizza. But here, here is why I'm team Seth. He wants pizza. No, it actually isn't because of that, even though I do love pizza. But I like sushi, but I don't love sushi. Mm -hmm. And if I'm having sushi, I want it fresh from the uh, sushi preparer's hands, whatever you call them. <laughs> you mean you want it really close, like right away from in the, the ocean? No, I want it right there in the restaurant. I don't want it to sit in someone's car for 15 to 20 I, I minutes before I eat it. <laughs> They're getting a delivery. Oh, that's true. They're getting a delivery, so that sushi <laughs> is going to be sitting in someone's car from the time the sushi has been prepared and then sit in the restaurant until the driver gets there. I'm like, I my sushi needs to be fresh from the chef. <laughs> I was like, I'm not eating sushi that's been sitting there for 15 minutes. Oh, uh, you Sorry. poor thing. Um, anyway, but seeing Seth and Meredith flirting with each other, I think is adorable. I was... I was right there along with Brooks. I was disgusted. <laughs> oh, really? I thought it was so I, sweet. It was just too much. I thought it was sweet because maybe it's because how I like to act. <laughs> oh, do you know how, like, I know because when he says, like, well, what do you want? And he says, you. I'm like, that is such something that Bear would say, too, to me while I'm trying to get him to get, like, food. And I'm like, it's just so stressful. I'm like, I'm trying to get dinner ready. I don't want to hear that you love me. <laughs> <laughs> Note taken. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so, what was that shit you said when I put this on you when he said about the ring? I do. <laughs> I was like, that's a really romantic... What was that shit you said? <laughs> I feel like this episode is really getting the, what we've been asking for. Like, things are happening. Tension is building. Mm -hmm. uh, Storylines are moving forward. Um, but I, I really like this Meredith and Seth flirting, making out, getting excited. She looks so happy when she, like when they're not talking, she's looking at him and she has just this look of love on her face that's so pretty. So <laughs> Can we just it. please order food? You guys are being really annoying. You guys are being really annoying. Thank you, bro. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> her wedding ring was huge. Yeah. Did you see that thing? But I think the most important that Meredith says about the relationship here is like before we were together for our kids. Mm -hmm. Now we're together for us. It's it's our time to make it or break it. I think that happens with a lot of long-term couples that have kids. Once your kids are gone, your focus is on each other. Yeah, yeah. That's tough for a lot of uh, parents. I don't like it that Seth mentions canned food would be good for dinner. <laughs> I did not like that. That made me, that gate, like, Chef Boyardee, like, that's gross to me. <laughs> well, you know, when he said that when we watched it the first time last Wednesday, I was like, ooh, oh, I want a can of SpaghettiOs. Whoa. I'm right there with Meredith. She's like, I am not having canned food for dinner. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have this. I haven't had SpaghettiOs in 100 years, but I'm not, I'm not too good for it. That's for sure. Gosh, Brooks was making me laugh so much this part because they're both like so into each other and loving on each other. And Brooks is just like, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> He's like, he's so, he's totally about them, like rekindling and being each other's soulmates and making it work and fig, but he does not want to be there to listen to this. Can you guys do this in your bedroom or something? Like I'm standing here. 
<laughs> Seth's like, Mare, you want to sit on my lap? And he's like, Dad, that's disgusting. I'm trying to eat. I'm right, see, I was right. I'm right there with Brooks this entire spot. I know. It's so funny how uh, wishy washy you are with Brooks. But again, he was a lot more like season one or episode one, Brooks. People on social media were really still only focused on when he was being bratty this moment, but I thought it was cute. I, I thought, thought it was, it was funny. Cute. Oh my gosh. The lovey dovey stuff. Ah. And then Whitney drives up to Sarah. The infamous Sarah. Oh, she is. Oh, my gosh. She lives, like, practically next door to the temple in which she got married, which we find out is also the same temple in which Whitney got married the first time. Ooh, and another kitty cat. There's yes. two of them. Oh, my gosh. Whitney's denim jumpsuit is amazing. I want a denim, denim jumpsuit so oh, bad. Oh, I do, too. I don't think it's the same one that Lisa was wearing several episodes ago. This one. I don't know. I think it is. Because it one... had puffy arms as well. This one looks like a two-piece, even though it's one, a one-piece. It looks like a denim jacket and jeans, even though it's a jumpsuit. I didn't notice that with the last one, but nonetheless, it's fierce. Uh, and those stilettos, girl! Poking through the mat that that she bought for the maids. Like, Why did she have to say that? <laughs> because she's on TV. That and was she so bougie. About yes, that's, <laughs> so, Sarah, there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on this week because the Sarah chick was at the White House last Wednesday when the riots were happening. Yes, the Capitol riots. And Ooh. so, you know, bad timing for this episode to come out because people really went after Whitney on social media. And I didn't catch the whole entire story, but it looks like Jen Shaw might have even tweeted something or posted something that was derogatory towards Whitney. But in the end, Jen Shaw retracted it and Whitney made a post saying, look, I don't, I don't know. A, a, you know, approve of this at all. Yeah. This is not who I am. This is nothing I believe in. I don't know if she said that she and Sarah, if she was separating her friendship with this woman or not, but she's fun TV, despite the fact that she's a horrible human well, being. Well, she's been friends with her forever. Well, she said she's friends with all the girls. Yeah. Like, they all know her. Yeah. So, like, it's... Uh... You can't just, like, cut your friend out of your life for making a mistake. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, sometimes you can. I mean, for their... Va yeah, you can, but, like, <laughs> for her values and stuff have seem very far right and I think that's why she wasn't able to get on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, Whitney and Sarah have lived a lot of the same life experiences together. I like that she said we've been adulting together. Again, it looks like the Sarah chick's a fun time but, uh, you know, we can't uh, approve of the type of things that she's putting out in the world, in the universe. Yeah, well, Whitney mentions that Justin's family had a hard time adjusting to their relationship. Oh my Ugh. gosh, that's so crazy. They wouldn't even put up their wedding picture until just recently, it sounds like. But not only their wedding picture, it's the Justin's first wedding picture and then Justin's first wife's new husband's picture. That. So now there's three sets. Don't you think that's hard to explain to guess? <laughs> right? And it's just nasty. It is. It's, it's nasty. just nasty. I mean, if you're still close with the ex-wife, fine. Be close with the ex-wife, but it's just nasty. My parents and my family is still really good friends with my first boyfriend, but they don't still have pictures of us up at the house. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she just put up a picture of us. Oh, yay. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, thanks, Mom. Um, Whitney mentions Mary and Jen's crap. Sarah says, well, you should talk to her about it. Yeah, which, you know, you know just if, talk to her about it. And <laughs> so a lot of people, of course, again, have been like, why did Whitney bring this up at the party? Why did Whitney bring this up at the party? You know, towards the end of the episode. And the bottom line, we see right here, Whitney says... When Jen is around Sharif, she's calm, mm -hmm. she's rational, she's a different type of person. Maybe that would be a good time to tell her. It was smart for her to think that. And, sh you know, if she didn't have so much liquid courage, maybe it would have been. I love all these <laughs> little things that are coming up in this episode that are slowly, like influencing Whitney's mind yeah, because like I know what yeah I know what it leads up to and I'm just like no <laughs> so and then plus have you ever watched a housewives where they didn't talk about their drama either at a social event or over a meal it's always always so I don't know why people are surprised yeah I know right I mean I'm sure that the producers were like Whitney you should drink that glass and then go over there and talk to her oh <laughs> uh, yeah 100 percent uh well let's take a quick break I need a drink myself Okay, I need a little sip. <laughs> so um, we will take this quick break and we will be right back. We'd love to give a shout out to our sponsor, Anchor Podcasts. 
If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. <laughs> There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Anchor is where we started with our podcast, and it's been really great for us, and that's how you're able to hear us on all the different streaming platforms. We love it. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> we are going to the aquarium. Bear, we've been there. We have. The aquarium here is really, really nice. Um, it's quite lovely. It's normally very interactive. Um, Pre-COVID, it was very interactive. You and I have been since COVID, and it's not as interactive as it used to be. No, it was more stressful than anything. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to be around anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little bit more too crowded for our uh, for our taste. But the layout was really pretty, and there's a lot of stuff to do there. Really, and outside they're building a new center made out of the former... Um, set from the U2 band 360 tour. Yeah, it's Outside, huge. It's massive. It looks like some kind of like claw game thing. It's, it's crazy. the world's largest recycled steel structure. That is crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we find out a little, a little known fact that glowfish are made in Area 51. That's a fact. Yes, that is a f uh, listen. Whatever Henry says, I'm sure. Has Henry to be. said it was a fact, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that from now on. But I really like that Lisa and Don John didn't just like shut him down. They're like, oh, really? Well, that's an interesting fact. And I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure there was more talk about it, like, or maybe not. Maybe they just blew by it. But I like that they didn't just be like, oh, Henry, that's stupid. No, they didn't. You know, I thought that was nice. I want to see what Jack thinks of it. I wonder if Jack's the one that told him that. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. I am really glad to see them all out together and not like in a work environment. Well, the, he, true. Uh, we find out from Lisa that they're never really home. Home is just a place where they put down their stuff and mm -hmm. sleep and then they're always on the go. <laughs> Lisa's like, is that a shark? Uh, no, that's a baby shark. <laughs> it's like, no, that's no, just that's a fish. Just a, just a giant fish. <laughs> With Lisa. a crazy head. Yes. I, I wish I could have been there to hear her say like what all the animals were. I'm like, what is that, Lisa? <laughs> She's like a starfish. I'm like, that's a seahorse. <laughs> <laughs> So the first time I went to the aquarium, I went with some uh, another friend of mine, and it didn't get to go with you. Yeah, you left me at home, <laughs> sick, dying. Oh, I'm sure I did. <laughs> um, we the, so I didn't get to like feed the penguins, but the craziest thing happened. We were in like the room where you watch the penguins, and all of the penguins. I mean, there has to be like 50 of them. Were all stopped and stood perfectly still, and they were all staring at this, like, one penguin who was, like, the wise leader. They were, <laughs> and not only were all they standing completely still, but they were sitting there with their wings out to their <laughs> side. They're preparing for air battle. <laughs> and seriously, I'm not kidding. We sat there for, like, 10 minutes, and these penguins, the all of them were stood there like... Yes, master. Did they get all quiet when everybody like entered into the room? There was, they were all. I mean, there was no motion. There was no noise. It was the we we're like the penguins are plotting to take over Salt Lake City. It was the weirdest, craziest thing you know I've ever what? seen in my life. This was before COVID. I think those penguins have something to do with spreading COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. that's 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 too much of a coincidence. It's to not too be much. True. There's a too much of a coincidence. There's a gang leadership in the penguin area, and then COVID happens. Yeah. There is something going on here. Hen oh gosh. <laughs> Henry wants to call his penguin fresh wolf or fresh penguin, you know, whichever is appropriate. Yeah, so they at the at our aquarium you get to do these like experiences. You could like I think swim with some sharks or be in a tank with sharks or something and you also get to feed penguins and there's something else I can't remember. I think it was a ray. You do get ray. to you get to pet the um... Man, the Man. rays. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really cool. But yeah, they want to name him Fresh Wolf. That obviously is like something he heard or made up and he thinks it's so cool. No, that's the name of their brand. I know. But he thought of that up and he calls everything Fresh Wolf oh, now. Gotcha. And so, yeah, we find out that three months earlier, 
they started a brand called Fresh Wolf, which we've talked about. I yeah. talked about it last episode. But I thought it's so funny because when when you were a kid, did you ever hear like a collection of words or something that you heard that you just thought was so amazing, sounds so cool, that you did that for everything, your passwords, your emails and stuff? Mine was makeshift, makeshift luck. Well, I, just, I, was, I was like obsessed with it. I named every, I named a band that too. <laughs> well, when I was young, there were no emails and passwords. <laughs> And there was no paper either. They right. just had rock that you chiseled into. I used to chisel my tablet. I used to tab a chisel Papa the Bear in my tablets. Wherever we go, he's always like, I remember when this was all Orange Grove, <laughs> as far as the eye could see. When I was doing my homework on my tablet on my dinosaur on the way to school. Uphill, <laughs> yes. in the snow, <laughs> both ways. <laughs> Lisa said that them having their business is a really great way for them to spend time together. So, you know, like. It is, though. It is. <laughs> It's working. It's like, working. I really do, maybe it's a little bit much. I don't know. I don't live there. But I do really find value because, as you can see here, he is excited about having a business. And hopefully that is giving him a future where he keeps that excitement and has that value for hard work that Lisa, again, I think maybe Lisa works, you know, work on the brain a little bit too much. Yeah. But I really do find value that when they say something, they do something instead of just talking I about it. I love that. I love that. I, I say that with my friends a lot. They're like, hey, let's get together. And when you Nothing say that, you know, happens. you know. So when I really do want to get together with someone, I say, okay, well then let's make plans, otherwise we won't. Exactly. So do something about it. <laughs> but... I would suggest that I think Jack and Henry should smile in their Fresh Wolf advertisements on Instagram. They look so, it's first of all, the pictures are always in black and white and they they just look sad. Trying, oh yeah, are they trying to be like sexy at 15 Seri years? No, like not sexy, like serious. I don't serious. know, they're just not smiling. But talking about looks, Jack is turning into Steve Jobs or that woman <laughs> that was trying to invent like the, the cure that was in like a pill or something a while ago. Remember her? No. Oh yeah, they did like this huge documentary about this woman who came forward and she was like, going to create a pill that cured everything. It was something like that. Well, anyways, everything. she did a, a ton of investing. She was going to be the next Steve Jobs, and she always wore a turtleneck. <laughs> and, like, she ended up, like, it was all fake. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice but that. But anyways, anytime I see somebody with a turtleneck, and Jack wears turtlenecks a lot, I'm just like, oh, Steve Jobs. I did not even notice He's very that. sophisticated. Um, then uh, Jenna's getting ready for her Beyonce Super Bowl outfit because the, they're getting ready for their Sunday date night. This is another one of those like, here's a quick scene, here's quick another scene. quick scene. Here's yeah. a quick... So Jen getting ready, Lisa picking out her hip hop outfit, and Henry playing with her ice. <laughs> <laughs> I want ice. Uh, yeah, I want ice too. Um, <laughs> and then Brooks, I kind of like that Fendi outfit that Brooks picked out for Meredith. I felt it I was did. kind it of was like just too like mono like monochrome kind of. Uh, I thought it was kind of hip hop fashion, like maybe what someone would wear to the Grammys or something. But I don't think that is Lisa's look. Meredith. <laughs> Meredith's look. <laughs> uh, I thought it worked anyway. Um, Jen is throwing her very first surprise party, and here is another moment of foreshadowing that you might not have caught. She says, I didn't eat today, so this <gasps> should fit. Oh my gosh, I didn't hear that, but that makes so much sense. <laughs> so she hasn't eaten, she's on antidepressants, and she's going to be drinking tonight. I'm just so glad we got a leg reveal. It wasn't so much a leg <laughs> reveal, but it was just her putting on her boots. I'm just glad for that. <laughs> I put in my notes, girl, you better eat. <laughs> Girl, you better feed yourself. <laughs> Sharif would be thrilled if they were eating at Popeye's. And I know, I ain't mad at that Sharif. I, I, he's probably like, I have to eat at fancy food all the time. I'd kill for a shrimp po' boy from Popeye's. I love, and you know what's funny is, right across the street from R. Smith's where we shop, they just built a Starbucks and a Popeye's right next to each other. You guys, we have to start making money off this podcast just so I can afford my Starbucks. We're going to open up a Venmo account so everybody can help us. <laughs> it's just going from my Starbucks and my Popeye's, okay? <laughs> or my bills, my other bills, whatever. So. Uh, but you know what? It's so funny because she's Jen's. 
got this huge fur coat that's obviously covering her outfit, but you can't cover those huge gold heels. And I'm like, you're not putting on gold heels to go to Popeye's girl. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well, maybe Jen Shaw would. But, <laughs> you know. but did you see how like, <laughs> see how happy he was to know that on his birthday he was going to Popeye's? Listen, later on he looks devastated to oh, not Oh, I be said that when, when he turns the corner and they're like, we're going golfing. He goes, yay, golfing. Well, <laughs> Do they got shrimp po' boys here? <laughs> <laughs> but I think his attitude changed when he got there and realized there was everybody in his life there. Yeah, I now, think that made it better. But I thought it was just them. <laughs> no, I've actually been to that Top Golf. You've we, been everywhere. I know, but we had a um, without me. Well, we had a team company party at Top Golf, so I, I was like, oh, yeah. I, I've been here. I know what they're doing here. Um, I love Heather showing her butt to the camera on I, the step and repeat. I wrote, I love it. Heather takes pictures like I do. Ass first and then pouty lips. Listen, mm. show your best assets if you will, uh, right? And we finally, oh my gosh, we finally get to meet Stu Chains. Hey, it's, it's Stu Chains. Uh, yeah, Sharif Jr. comes in and he calls Stuart Run DMC and he's like, no, I'm, I'm Stu Chains. Uh, <laughs> I love it how he says, I'm Stu Chains. It's so like quiet and me yes, <laughs> and I'm like you, you gotta be a like, stew chains <laughs> and then and then Whitney shows up and she's like oh no I forgot my golf club I'm like honey this is top golf it's like putt putt but you know what people are very specific about their own gloves it's just like with bowling people want to bring their own bowling balls I, okay. because it's you know okay. they want to be like the best and Whitney looks straight up out of the 90s <laughs> oh she's she's right on and then Lisa and Meredith comes in and everyone's talking about how they look exactly alike and I wrote okay. down Story of Hunter's life. <laughs> I mean, you just heard it just a couple of seconds ago. I'm just, I'm just glad that everyone else sees it too. I just need one of the cast me members to be like, "Oh, Lisa. I mean, Meredith," so that it would make me feel a lot better. <laughs> well, you know, Meredith. You know that short haircut in her confessions is actually a wig, but she has really gotten her haircut that length in real life and she said part of the reason is so people can tell them apart oh my god <laughs> there it is then we they sharif and jen show up and we see how devastated he is to not be going to popeyes <laughs> i loved that his son omar dressed up just like sharif. i know i, thought that was I awesome. know i i love their family dynamic they seem like they really get along really well family wise i you agree know? i agree but the two boys are really like low-key level-headed seeming kind of children but once they get in there and he sees everyone he does seem really really excited yeah he he's he's almost excited as whitney when she sees justin she runs and uh, legs wide right open. <laughs> but you know, Jen says multiple times in this episode that this is how she's showing love. If you want to get love, you gotta show love, she says one time. And then another time she says, hopefully Sharif will see how I really how much I really love him. You know, we all have different love languages for sure. Yes. Um, but just doing that, I don't know if that would be like, oh, Hunter must really love me. Mm. It, you know, especially if, if we had had problems in our marriage or if, if there was some sort of distance between us, I'd be like, oh, Hunter threw me a top golf party. He must really love me. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you went through the effort to get everyone there and, yeah. to, and have you and have all of your assistants reserve that for us, then yes, that does show that you care. But if we were having problems or if you, you need to get the point across to me how much you love me, I don't know if a party at top golf would be the way to do it. Gosh, what is gonna do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Give me your blood. <laughs> uh, but I love the cutscene back to Meredith's birthday party. Yes. I like because then it just shows Heather looking at me ball and checking us out. We love the meatballs. <laughs> she is my spirit. I well, love she it. calls it the eyes wide shut, freaky white people shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen eyes wide shut, but I know what part they're talking about. <laughs> I love how Jin Shaw just disrobes in front of everyone. They show up to the party, go down the stairs, and then she just disrobes. Oh, amen, sister. Do that reveal <laughs> while everybody's looking. <laughs> uh, but Heather's like, uh, this is going to be the kind of party where I'm the last one to go home. Uh, I'm like, oh, please, can we please party together? Heather, oh, my gosh. You, you, you and Heather knew, Gay. If you only knew how much fun we would have. I'd be like, it's 1030. Can we start planning to go home? <laughs> and I'd be like, you going home. I'm hanging out here with Heather. Uh-uh. I'm staying at Heather's house tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Heather is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> the dance contest yes. is a blast. I loved the dance cruise. Oh, my yes. gosh. Sharif, Sharif, Heather, and Whitney versus the other women. <laughs> 
Yeah. I was only interested in Sharif's dance crew. Oh, he's so sexy. <laughs> it was so but, awesome. But Whitney, uh, Whitney goes down yeah, into battle right away. Drunk Whitney is killing it. <laughs> She's having a blast, and it's making me have a blast. And then just Lisa jumps on that shade. She's like, she's bringing out her middle school dance routine. Oh, Get off the floor. That's jealousy. But uh, <laughs> Whitney falling over is one of my favorite parts. I, I love Listen, it. Listen, throw, throw Luann in the bushes. Let Whitney fall over on the dance floor. <laughs> uh, you know, let somebody fall over on the runway. I don't know. If I, I'm, uh, it's there that's was, good TV. Did you see the little white kid trying to get in on the dance? Yes, I did. I was like, oh, I don't know if you're a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> but can we get a show where Coach Sharif coaches a dance crew that, with Whitney? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, Coach Sharif's dance crew. I'm in. Uh, yes. Um, I really feel that Whitney did win the dance contest. I feel the same especially way. Especially when she did the twerk on her head. A handstand twerking? Yes, Girl. Was, but, you know... Not only is it Jen Shaw's husband's party, yeah. but even Whitney was like bowing to Jen after she did like the caterpillar or the worm, whatever you call that. That's what people were doing to you on the boat cruise when you won the dance off. <laughs> that was guess. awesome. So um, I see why they gave it to Jen, but I really do feel like what I saw on screen. Oh my gosh. Well, Whitney's like, like fun time is about to end. <laughs> well, you know, I've actually fallen over on the dance floor before myself. Did I ever tell you that story about when I put Jennifer Crawford on my shoulders? Oh my gosh, yes. So um, I was <laughs> oh I was gosh. the president of my college show choir. Uh, wow. Yes, yes. Not <laughs> humble brag. But we used to kind of sometimes finish off one of our numbers by putting a girl on our shoulder in a shoulder set. And one night, my friend Jennifer and I from uh, back in South Carolina we were at a bar that we used to frequent called The Spot and we were dancing on the floor and Jennifer was a cheerleader back in the day. So Jennifer and I decided that we're going to do a shoulder sit and me not knowing my own strength and also not realizing, oh, she's a cheerleader. She knows how to push herself up off the ground. I lifted her up in the air and she flew <laughs> up over my body <laughs> and we both <laughs> fell back onto the dance floor. Oh my God. So I was like, Whitney, I got you, girl. I got you girl it's okay don't be embarrassed you just keep twerking <laughs> Poor Whitney. you might want to be embarrassed though about how drunk you are and about how you're getting ready to start this the starting of this it is so scary but you could see like <laughs> okay hold on so first of all you could tell how bad this is gonna go from whitney going over to heather gay and asking her like to come because heather gay is like oh no i want to go over there and then it like waits a couple of seconds and then when he's like do you want to come over there with me? <laughs> and she's like barely, she's looking at two Heathers right now because she's so trash. It right? just makes me laugh so hard. But it's the longest, most uncomfortable, hardest sentence that she is trying to get through. Seriously. But it made me laugh so hard because she's like, okay, wait, hold on, hold on, let me restart. And that says the exact and same. And repeats the exact same thing she, she just tell, said. She has practiced this speech in her head uh, so many times. She's a straight shooter. But this is the sloppiest shot I have ever seen. <laughs> it's, if if she would have just kind of gotten to the point a little bit quicker mm -hmm. and not like riled Jen up waiting for it, that would frustrate. I'd already uh, be pissed. The I'm whole, she keeps getting so close to being like, and the, well, I was just, I'm surprised that there wasn't a clean slate. Hold on, let me start over. <laughs> and Heather's like, the whole time, I'm like, Heather, stop her. Heather, stop her. Well, she her. does. Heather is finally like, so listen. Yeah. <laughs> this was, uh, it's because they say they're scared of you. <laughs> yes. And Heather, I mean, Whitney's just like, uh, Heather, I had this handled. I was like, uh, girl, no, you had that handled as gracefully handled. as a bull in a china shop. Oh, yeah. She did not have that handled. So the longer she's talking to Jen, the more Jen is getting ticked off. She hasn't had any food. Her antidepressants are being covered up by her liquor. Oh, my gosh. Um, but Jen hears Mary's name, and she freaking oh, loses it. That is a trip. Gar. Oh my gosh, but Trigger. I mean, she just flips out and she cannot handle herself. And again, she didn't eat anything all day. She's on antidepressants. One drink is like 10 drinks. <laughs> and the one thing that Lisa is concerned about is like, um, I just want to make sure everyone knows that I am not afraid of Jen. <laughs> right away. She, she's not trying to, she doesn't care about anything that is happening. She just has to make it, let it be known. <laughs> you know, I am she not. She says it like a million times. Yes, she's like, let it, let it be known that I am not afraid of Jen. Uh. And then, Whitney. <laughs> 
then you feel like it's a good idea to bring up Jen. When he's talk. like, like <laughs> she's like, well, I might as well start doing that. I'm already halfway there. I might as well keep going. <laughs> oh, I was like, no, 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 no. So she brings up about how Meredith's relationship is being talked about by Jen and some of the other ladies. I was like, you brought up the first conversation because you thought Jen would be calm. She's clearly not calm. Oh my gosh. It was... <laughs> She's like, hey, what you gonna do? I'm done engaging on the conversation. Thank you, Salt Lake City Housewives, for really giving us an incredible episode again. Well, you, I guess you can't tell Jen or Whitney anything because it's gonna come back out at some point, especially... Don't tell Whitney anything because it's going to come out, but it's going to come out the wrong so drunk. Moment. <laughs> wrong moment. But you know what? I applaud Whitney because that she's given us some real good housewife drama. Right. And it's not like she wasn't probably prompted or, you know, prodded yeah. from a producer somewhere. Ugh, like, Jen. you're, you're going to need to talk to Jen about this at the party. You know? And Jen's going to have to pay for that glass. Oh, she, well, she hucks that it glass. It looks like her marriage might be paying for it coming up next week. No, I, I, yeah. the next week. Next but... week comes that episode I've been dreading because they get in that big fight while they're in the bathtubs, and I'm not looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, I, I hate it that, like, Jen is so pissed, and she runs to Sharif, and she's, like, flipping out. She's like, I want to go. I need to go. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Sharif just sends her home with their son, Omar, which I thought was sweet. And... I want to know what was going on in that car because Omar was like, Poor "Mom, Omar. Mom, like, stop, stop, Poor stop." Omar. I felt bad, but yeah. uh, you know, he we... just got over being sick, and he's just a kid. <laughs> yeah, he's just a kid. He's like, "Mom, I just want to go home." And then <laughs> Sharif Junior is like, "Do you know what happened?" And then Sharif Senior is like, "Mom's in there drinking and doing dumb shit." <laughs> You know, well, cause, you know, he doesn't drink. He's Muslim. He doesn't drink, and it's probably not into her drinking and. Oh, I forgot to mention, during this whole fight, I love it that they cut to Whitney's husband, Justin. Just, pun God, just like he's no like, uh, no, totally oblivious to what is no. going on. But he does find out later when, I hate seeing it, but I hate seeing Whitney crying, crying and she's I crying know. to her husband. And she did not, honestly, she did not want it to go that way. She was just <sighs> trashed and put on the spot. And honestly, she was preparing for it. She, uh, far too much yeah, beforehand. Yeah. She is what she should have done is she should have grabbed Meredith, she should have grabbed Lisa, and she should have grabbed Shen and been like Shen, Jen, and she should have been like, Hey, this is what Mary said. Is any of this true? <laughs> yeah. Instead of being like, Hey, you know, I'm a straight shooter, Jen. Mary Oh, let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> it was so such a juicy episode. It really was. We the momentum is back and in full force, and I am here for it. Oh gosh, it's just it, this episode of them coughing was a, a really, it really was great. interesting. Great fun, episode. scary episode. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us again this week. As always, please check out our social media, especially if you want to see what our special Lisa um, surprise is this week on Facebook and Instagram. We are the Real House Bears of SLC. On Twitter, we are House Bears of SLC. And you can email us at the Real House Bears of SLC at gmail.com. And you can catch our podcasts as well as some behind the scene videos and other just fun videos we made on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that. And also we are on iTunes podcast. If you could please give us a five star review and write down something nice about us, we would be very, very appreciative. Thank you all so much for joining. We look for look forward to being back with you next week. Yay, thanks you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, love you, bye. All right, now you can talk. Oh my God, I love that. Oh my, I love that. No, I love that. I love that. Hello. 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 One, two, three. Hello. Hello. <laughs>